That is disgusting. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. Can you feel the, the pus inside of the food? I'm not quite sure what you're going to find underneath that. But it's not going to be nice. We're going to get fluorescent boogers, basically. He looks as though he's had a few too many pies down here, but that's just all fluid. At number five today. So he was a lockdown puppy. We've bonded really closely and he's a really great companion. Alfie suffers with a condition called chronic conjunctivitis, basically a long-term condition, and it leads to very red, very sore eyes. To try and potentially sort out uh, an enrolling eyelid mm -hmm. is surgical. Probably have to go under general anaesthetic, so there is a risk with that, so you do worry a bit. I can't imagine life without him now. <laughs> Come on, you. Michelle has brought her playful cocker spaniel Alfie to Scott's Isleworth practice. Alfie! And it looks like the energetic 14 month old is happy to be visiting the doctor. He actually enjoys coming to the vets, which is not like most animals, so um, yeah, maybe, maybe he brings up these tricks so he can come back all the time. Alfie! Oh, you know your name. New to owning a pet, Michelle has been surprised at how quickly Elfie found a way into her heart. I got Alfie almost one year ago now, so he was a lockdown puppy. I've never owned a dog before. You do form such a close attachment to them. Like, he's been fantastic for me with all the lockdown restrictions and not being able to see friends and family. We've bonded really closely and he's a really great companion. I can't imagine life without him now. Hi there, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Alfie. Hello, happy boy. How are you? How are you? Are you okay? Are you the cutest dog ever? <laughs> are you? So nice to be welcomed in a practice when they want to actually see you. Normally yeah. they run the other way. He loves coming in here. <laughs> like every time I go walk past, he's pulling to come in. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. I wish all patients were like Alfie. He comes into the practice. I'm not his vet, I'm just his mate. How's those eyes? Yeah, it's looking pretty bad at the moment. Yeah, pretty mucky, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, let's go on into the consult room and have a look at your eyes, shall we? Yes. Alfie suffers with a condition called chronic conjunctivitis, basically a long-term condition which can be inflammatory or bacterial in origin, and it leads to very red, very sore eyes. Right, so let's have a look at that, because you are incredibly handsome, but that eye is not his best feature, <laughs> is it? It really isn't. So, discharging a lot at the moment. You're so good, you're such a good patient. The recurring inflammation could be the result of interned eyelids, causing Elfie's eyelashes to rub against his eyeballs. The eye rolls in a little bit on this side, and sometimes that can be a cause for uh, the eyelashes rolling in. And commonly, do you actually see eyelashes in his eyes? No, I don't see anything like that, really. Alfie's breed are predisposed to slightly deeper skin folds around the eye, and sometimes that does predispose them to very sore eyeballs. A lot of the time, you'll actually see the eyelashes almost laying on the eye, mm -hmm. and they're constantly... So what happens is you get a sort of wickering effect. Yeah. Um, and um, bacteria is just constantly being asked to go into the eye. Yeah. To try and potentially sort out uh, an enrolling eyelid mm -hmm. is surgical, um, right. and it's a plastic surgery procedure basically where we almost take a little V from the side and it kind of just opens the eyes up like that yeah. and rolls the eyelashes out because okay. at the moment they're slightly in. The prospect of surgery on her little mate's eyes is not what Michelle was hoping to hear. So is that like an operation and an anaesthetic? So yes. Yeah probably have to go under general anaesthetic so there is a risk with that so you do worry a bit so I know I'll feel quite anxious when it comes to leaving him. <laughs> Just whether we have got an issue with eyelashes rolling in I'm not so sure about that. For now Scott decides against surgery. So the next thing I want to do basically I want to check to make sure that the nasolacrimal duct, so the duct between the eye and the nose, is yep. patent, is open, to allow for draining, because sometimes it's almost like a sink. If the, the drain of the sink is blocked, mm -hmm. then the, the water overflows the sink, and so you get excessive tear production, yeah. and that's prone to infection. Yeah. 
Scott yops for a less intrusive procedure that hopefully will stop the constant irritation affecting Elfie's quality of life. My feeling is here is that what we should do is do a tear duct flush so it kind of you know become a plumber because <laughs> we might just find if we do that the drainage is sorted he doesn't build up the tears and the infections start to go away. Okay. And how do you do that? Well you actually flush fluid into the drain and out the pipe and that's exactly what we're going to do. So it's a bright orange dye, it starts off orange and then turns bright green. To find if Elfie's tear ducts are blocked, Scott inserts a harmless dye into his eyes to see if the coloured liquid makes its way down the ducts and through the young dog's nose. By using this fluorescent dye, Alfie here should produce fluorescent tears that then should produce fluorescent snot. Uh, and at the moment, he's not, which would suggest that that nasolacrimal duct is blocked. We are seeing the blockage. We've just constantly got like little cups full of tears just waiting for bacteria to fall in them. Could certainly explain why he keeps getting eye infections. Yeah. So what we should do is have a tear duct flush. So is that all right, Michelle? Yeah, you do that? it's fine. Would you do that today? Or... Yeah, absolutely. Mm. What a shocking flirt you are. Mm. <laughs> yes, good boy. Darn it. Thank you so much. All right, no worries. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Oh. It has been quite surprising how often I have been to the vet. With him, he seems to have something every couple of months to, to kind of get checked out. You just feel really sad for them that they've got the, got the problems that they have and his sore eyes, so you just want to get it fixed. Hello, happy boy. <laughs> how are you? Are you okay? Hey? So happy. Aren't you a joyful chap? So my job today is to give him a sedation and then we'll be flushing those tiny little drain holes, the nasolacrimal duct, and hopefully have his uh, tears flowing normally again. The hard thing about doing a, a nasolacrimal duct flush is actually finding the puncture, the drain hole. Uh, it can be microscopic, just maybe a millimetre in diameter. So it does really make you squint. The hole is kind of here and what we need to do is to flush into that tiny little hole. So it's basically like a, a dart into a bullseye. You've got to get the bullseye and then you're going to start seeing the tears coming down the nose and then we know we've done the right thing. I'm just going to put these on to be able to see a little bit better. So what I've done is just put some of the dye back in his eye to see that we're going to get fluorescent boogers, basically. Um, and if he does, then it doesn't mean that he's been abducted by aliens. It does mean that I've managed to flush his nasolacrimal ducts. After several flushes with a solution similar to natural tears, Scott waits to see if he has successfully unblocked Elfie's tear ducts. So you can see there now it's coming out. I've been successful in flushing both of Alfie's tear ducts, which is great, so I can see that the fluid is coming out of his nostrils, which is really good. But sadly, if the chronic inflammation returns, he may still need surgery to stop his eyelashes rubbing on his eyes. It really is the last chance saloon for this guy because if this doesn't work, then I will need to perform surgery. It does seem like maybe the lower eyelid is rolling in slightly, it's causing irritation and that could be leading to the excessive tear production. All right, okay, so let's wake him up. Waking up. Hello. <laughs> so you told you. Good boy, well done, well done, good boy, yes. Conscious Alfie is happy Alfie, yes. With surgery thankfully avoided. He's such a little character, he's really funny and he always just wants to play and he's very lively and active. So yeah, when you don't have him for a couple of hours, you do actually miss him. Michelle is even happier to see Elfie than he is to visit his favorite pet doctor. Come on then. Good boy. There's Hello. mummy, who's that? <laughs> Here you go. You should have seen him as soon as he woke up. The first thing that moved was his tail. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. <laughs> so yeah, everything went really well. Managed to flush the ducts perfectly. Those tear ducts are clear. 
yeah. and hopefully with some medication and time, that should be it. I can see, even though you're wearing a mask, he puts a smile on your face. <laughs> yes, he does. He's fantastic. All right then, well, it looks like you need to go and have a nap, my friend. Yes, rest that tail. All right then, Michelle. Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Good to see you. you Good too. to see him. All right. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. This week's number four. We've got uh, one elephant called Buangun. She's an old lady. She needs to some uh, some treatment for her abscesses. She got half a dozen abscesses over her body, and uh, maybe you could help and check on her and help to clean it out. All glamorous jobs, right? Yep. Only 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 for you. Special jobs. <laughs> I've done plenty of abscesses in dogs and cats, but I get the feeling with an elephant, it might be entirely different. That's an abscess there. Yeah, that's one of the abscesses that needs treatment. Nine rescue elephants are now permanent residents at the centre, and most have chronic, long-term health issues. She's been used heavily in the tourism industry and before that in the logging industry, so she has had these abscesses probably years before she was rescued. She had about triple amount of abscesses when she was brought in, but the treatment has been taken over two years now. Mm. So it's a matter of cleaning really well every other day. That's why I'm here. To treat a girl this size, it's going to take a team effort. So we got some volunteers, two girls from Australia, one from Canada, and they're oh, gonna uh, help you. Hello, how are you going? Hello, good, so you guys can help? Band together, a bit of Aussie spirit, and triumph over the Dutchman here? <laughs> that time. <laughs> These abscesses are huge. I mean, they, they make grapefruits look small. You can feel the, the pus inside them too. So it's important we, we get as much pus out of those as we can. Thailand has about 2,200 elephants in the wild and approximately 2,500 in captivity. The problem is that captive elephants are placed under the livestock law, so they can be bought and sold just like a cow, a horse, or a buffalo but we have no animal welfare laws. So the treatment of elephants in captivity is hard to control. And that's one of our biggest problems. So you got a favorite in there? Amongst the um, corn and the pineapple? She really likes the corn. Yeah? Yeah. Elephants are being exploited, working long hours, uh, going through heavy training sessions with a lot of cruelty. I think that's one of the biggest problems we really have when it comes to animal welfare. It's not only the local tourism industry now demanding for these elephants, even China as a growing nation now wants these elephants. And you know, when there's a demand and there's a lack of enforcement, that's gonna be illegal trade. That is deep. Mm, yeah, huge. The really hard thing to accept about all these abscesses is that they all arise from the same cause. This hard life these elephants have had to lead. Oh, there we go. The worry with Boer is, given her history in logging and in tourism, that perhaps Mahouts may have hit her with sticks. Those little sticks break the skin, bacteria get underneath the skin, and from there, set up infections. Now we've got it clean. The plan is to try to get as much of this antibiotic cream up there as we can. And then, with any luck, this might just stay in there. Just make sure that that environment in there, which is now sterile, stays as close to that as possible. All right, next one. There we go, here's the leg. It's almost like she knows I'm out there somewhere and <laughs> just isn't quite sure where, so just starts kicking in all directions. While this is an uncomfortable thing for Bill to go through, it's just such a small part of a day. The rest of a day is filled up with play, filled up with food, and filled up with love. And it's miles away from her old life. I think after we've had a bath together and I've tended to your wounds, we, we now know each other <laughs> quite well. So it only makes sense that I'd feed you as well, yeah? Number three. 
Hi there, Hi. how are you doing? Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. And you, do you want to come on in? Sure, thank you. Scott's next patient has arrived with Meg, the wildlife manager at a local native fauna park. So, what's been happening? Uh, so this is Honey the squirrel glider. Uh, this morning we noticed that she's got a small swelling on the left-hand side of her face, and it looks like she's got an infected tooth right at the back. Okay. Wow, that's so little. Yeah, she's tiny. Oh, she's so light. <laughs> Hello, precious. Oh my gosh, look at you. We checked all of our squirrel gliders this morning and noticed that Honey had a, a bit of a swelling uh, just on the lower left side of her face along her jawbone. It wasn't noticed yesterday, so I'm hoping it's only just started and we've caught it early enough that we can get it treated without too much discomfort for her. Wow, she's so beautiful. Yeah, isn't she's she? gorgeous. Exquisite markings. Wow, hello, baby. How are you? Popping out of the little bag, Honey, just this vision of gorgeousness. She's got these beautiful big eyes. Of course, she's a nocturnal creature. Seems also quite confident. She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she's pretty cool. Yeah. Honey is friendly and, and placid with the keepers at Karanda Koala Gardens. She's very happy to be out and about with us when we're feeding her. Squirrel gliders uh, do exactly as their name implies. They glide. They will start from one tree and be able to, like a kite, catch some air and glide to the next tree. So uh, they don't fly by any means. They don't actually gain any height. They do glide in a descending manner. So how far can they glide from tree to tree? About 50 meters. If, if they start high enough and they have enough open space, so they use their wings, if you want to call them that, the large bits of skin connect from the back of their hand to the back of their feet. And they use that to glide from tree to tree. Oh, good girl. Let's see. I love Australian wildlife. When I was seven, I was camping with my parents in the outback and a small rodent touched me on the finger and it was this sort of almost religious moment where I just went, you know, this is what I want to do. I have an affinity with animals and I took it all the way to being a vet. Now I can see that swelling yeah. very clearly. So just under the eye yeah. on that right hand side, right? Yeah, yeah, her left, your right, yeah. So has she still been eating normally? She was eating yesterday. Yeah. What do you feed these guys? A bit of fruit and a little bit of hard veg. And then they also get a variety of browse, so we give them eucalyptus and fig. And the possibility is that she's got an infection around the tooth, or so maybe it's some sort of foreign body, maybe a bit of um, other vegetable material that she's, she's eating. Yeah, it is a possibility that she's had to chew on some of the browse and maybe a stick or something's gotten stuck. The likely causes for the swelling on Honey's face is a tooth root abscess, so either there's a damaged or dodgy tooth that needs to come out, or there's something stuck between the teeth. Either of those things cause infection, leads to pus, and that's the swelling that you see. Hey, Kath. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good. So I've got little Honey, the squirrel glider. She is unbelievably gorgeous. Um, here we go. Just have a look. When you see this girl, she is just magic. Oh, hi, beautiful. Isn't she just magical? She's stunning. You can see the swelling on her face. That's it, yeah. And that's the issue that we have to address today. So we'll give her a little bit of gas. Yep. Wait until she's nice and sleepy. I'll have a look into the mouth. We'll see what the problem is and we'll go from there. Perfect. Sound good? All right. Okay. Yes. All right, sweetie. Put her nose in there. There you go. This is the first time Scott's treated a squirrel glider, and dealing with such a delicate native animal is making him more than a little nervous. All right, you happy for me to put the yes, gas on? Yes, I am. Yeah. Come on. It's really difficult to manage the anaesthetic of a little creature like a squirrel glider. When they're that little, they have a very fast metabolism, so they absorb the anaesthetic quickly and then they throw it away quickly as well. So they wake up, then they go back deeper, and so trying to get the job done in between those quick highs and lows is really tricky. She's getting there. Yeah, she's nearly there. So good girl. So she's getting a little bit floppy there. It's hard to build up on that back molar. Just trying to see if that tooth wants to actually come out. Scott needs to take a closer look at Honey's tooth to decide if it needs to be removed. Jail bars right in the front of the mouth there, just makes it tricky. Yeah. But the shape of the four-year-old marsupial's mouth is making the job 
almost impossible. The anatomy of the squirrel glider is quite challenging. Very long, pointy incisors, kind of jail bars getting in the way of what I need to do. So it does make it really difficult to navigate around the oral cavity. So access is proving quite difficult in this guy. All right, sweetie, it's all right. Suddenly, the tiny patient begins to stir. Honey is giving us constant frights, going deep into the anaesthetic and then would virtually stop breathing and then she would wake up because you took the anaesthetic away. It really is quite a difficult day at the office. I just wondering what we should do to just monitor her heart rate just to... Honey is a tiny little creature, so delicate and unfortunately can die without trying at all. You just need to go back to your basic skills. Your patient needs to keep breathing and their heart needs to keep beating. All okay? Breathing's good, heart yeah. rate's great. Amazing, okay, perfect. With Honey's vital signs back to normal, Scott discovers the cause of the fragile little creature's swollen mouth. Oh, yuck. There's a massive build-up of fluid just here. So it's definitely an abscess. I can see that the molar at the back of her jaw is actually fine. I crack a bit of tartar off, but there's no issue of uh, root decay. But further back, there's this sort of cheesy pus that's present there. And although I'm using cotton buds to try and remove the pus, there's still a big, large lump of fluid that needs empty. Gosh, yuck. There was a lot of infection in there. Mm. Once again, the peculiar shape of Honey's mouth is preventing Scott from getting enough access to the infected area. There's definitely a hole down the back there where all this pus is coming from, so I think what we'll do, I might just put a tiny little incision just underneath the chin and flush it out that way. As a vet, you need to be light on your feet and when you can't perform a procedure one way, you need to come up with a solution. So as I can't get the pus out of her mouth, I know I need to go from underneath to try and relieve that pressure of this abscess. What it means now is I need to perform a lancing of the area, basically using a scalpel, very carefully applied through the muscles and the nerves and the blood vessels of that area, and then allow the pus to run free and escape that area. Oh, wow. That is disgusting. Oh Look gosh, so much infection. Oh my God. As soon as I lance it, a torrent of nasty green pus comes flying out of Honey's face. How can something so cute produce something so disgusting? That is a huge amount of pus for a little creature. Yeah, it's like half the size of its head. Mm. So glad we've done that. Okay. Oh, that's gonna make such a massive difference. Just that pressure relief. You can just imagine, she'll be like, ah. Yes. Within the pus is a whole bunch of toxins and it actually really depresses you, makes you feel nauseous and sick. So now that we've got rid of that, that's gonna be the start of Honey's recovery. Even the swelling's gone down considerably. Yeah, I can actually feel she's got a jaw again. Scott gives the infected area a flush before starting the tiny squirrel glider on a course of antibiotics. Okay, well that looks pretty good, I think. That face looks so much oh, better. It looks so much better. Yeah. Hi, beautiful. Hi. Honey's face just all of a sudden changes to be much more sleek and slimline and perfectly balanced on both sides. So we know we've done a good job here and it is just a privilege to be handed tiny mouthed honey. It could all go wrong, but it didn't, thank goodness. Meg will be here soon to pick you up and reunite you with your family. Honey has made a rapid recovery from her surgery. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Here's your girl. Hello, honey. How are you feeling? Yeah, she well, looks heaps better. Yes, <laughs> yes. She had the most incredible amount of pus come out of her mouth. Oh, it no. was really great. It was a lot. Well done, sweetheart. Hello. Oh, you want to go back home, you don't you, baby? Ah, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> honey looks so much better now. The swelling in her face is completely gone. So I'm really happy we can take her back home and just continue with some antibiotics for a few days and she should come good. It's great. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> but Honey's not ready to go home just yet. She's become quite attached to Scott. 
Yep. <laughs> Honey seems to be um, a little bit like Velcro with Dr. Scott. Um, a little bit hard to get her off of him. Uh, I think she fell in love a little bit and has a little bit of a crush. Come on now. She just loves her vet. What can she say, you know? <laughs> there we go, Honey. This little creature is absolutely stunning and getting the chance to have a little play with her and a bit of a smooch is really pretty special. I wish she was gliding off into the sunset back to the UK with me. In the number two spot, we have... Come on. Come on. At the Bondi Clinic, vet nurse Tonya has arrived for work with her pet ferrets, Baby and Jack. Sarah brings in her dog every day, Neil brings in his dogs. I bring my ferrets and Mel brings in her rats and her bunnies, so it's awesome. We all get to hang out with each other. It's a really good environment. Good morning, Mrs. Cause. Well, it's Neil here from the Vet Hospital. I'm just ringing to let you know, I'm just coming around shortly to pick up Charlie and Dr. Chris Brown will be coming in to say hello to you. How do you think Charlie's going? I, to me, he looks like he's certainly getting worse. He's, he's definitely deteriorating. Neil and I are picking up little Charlie today. He's a delightful little nine-year-old King Charles Cavalier Spaniel, but he's got a really serious heart condition and there's no cure. It's got that real tropical feel, doesn't it? Charlie's owner is a favourite at the clinic, simply known as Mrs. Corswell. Hello, Mrs. Corswell, it's Neil here. Hey, Charlie, you're our boy. The sick Charlie and his mate, Mr. Bojangles, are the centre of the 88-year-old's existence. It just seems though Mrs. Corswell can't actually hear us. Just coming. Okay. Yes. Hello. Neil and the other staff often run errands for Mrs. Corswell and we've even made up this chart so she can follow all the medication that little Charlie needs. And the sugar and the Panadol you want to. Oh, I'll pop sugar. those in for you, okay? Thank you so much. I'll just pop those there. She's an amazing Obviously. lady. She really takes great care of those pets. It's a bit worrying for me, I suppose, sometimes because I worry whether she's taking care of herself. In the past, Charlie and Mrs. Corswell have battled for dominance. Very regal. Oh yes, you know, he's very bossy, little, little mm. bastard, you know, what it started off with. But the older he got, and the more, more he needed affection, and realised that he didn't depend, depend on me. Yeah. Now, Mrs Corswell is as eccentric as they come, but an absolute joy to be around. You never quite know what you're going to get with her. I think he's um, existing on a will to live. Charlie has a leaking heart valve, which can't be fixed. It's now just a matter of time. Okay. Come on, Charles. All right, that's it. Each week we take Charlie to the clinic to drain all that fluid from his abdomen. It's just to try and relieve the pressure on his circulation because his heart is already struggling so much. He's so special and obviously so is Mrs. Corswell. And yeah, we go that extra mile for them. little aliens swimming in water but they are actually intestinal loops. Each of those lines there is one centimetre so we've got one, two, three centimetres of fluid. The ultrasound graphically shows the fluid that has flooded into his abdomen. He's got a, a leaking valve so each time his heart pumps blood some leaks back through that, that leaking valve. As a result he gets a, a build up of, of fluid in his circulation which you can see here that's why he looks as though he's had a few too many pies down here. But that's just all fluid. Now this is actually going to cause a bit of coughing too, so we don't want to do it for too long. It's a very big heart, at least eight centimetres across for a small dog. I mean, it's almost a balloon that's sitting in his chest. Sorry, puppy. He's just got this huge heart that pushes up on his lungs. So and how, how big should it be, Chris? Probably two thirds that size, even half that size. Okay. His heart's just really doing its best to keep up and, and unfortunately it just can't really Keep up and up. The motorised suction pump is like a vacuum cleaner, sucking out nearly two litres of fluid from the spaniel's bloated belly. It gives Charlie real breathing space, keeping him alive. Just always in amazement at this process. He's only eight kilos, yet Charlie each week produces over a litre, almost two litres of fluid. It's amazing he has the energy to even produce that fluid, let alone keep on living. It's, he's just a, a little wonder. It is hard watching him deteriorate. You know, he's such a lovely dog. He had lots of personality. It makes me sad just thinking about it. He's got all of the year.
After Charlie's sleepover at the clinic, Chris is escorting the King Charles Spaniel home to reunite with Mrs Corswell and Mr Bojangles. Hey Charlie boy, look who's here. Oh, look at my little Charlie. It turns out the octogenarian has plans to never forget her little spaniel, just like her last dog, Mickey. Mickey's in there and I say, say hello to Mickey in the morning, you know. He's never replied to it, never. Remember this vividly, the man walking up those steps hmm. with this dog in his arms. And it was your Mickey. My Mickey. And it, it was so nice to get him back even like this. Yeah. Apparently he was stuffed by one of the museum uh, taxidermists, so he's got this sort of rather aggressive, wild tone. But the taxidermist didn't realise he's a family pet, not a wild animal. No. He's trying a bit of... Oh, he collects the dust, obviously. I think he'd survive a vacuum cleaner job. Would you do the same thing with Charlie? Absolutely, because they have people to me. Mm. I mean, I, you, know, you don't do that to people either. <laughs> Hardly. Um, fancy having a house full of sort of uh, <laughs> corpses. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, oh dear? You're gonna stick around and be my buddy, aren't you, darling? My little doggy. And this week's number one. Today. Mobile vets Alison and Audrey are heading out of Sydney today to Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary. The twins are regular volunteers at the sanctuary, which cares for hundreds of sick and injured animals every year. Hi Rosemary, how are you? The girls have been called out by owner Rosemary who has a new arrival that needs urgent care. It's a little boy called Joe. He's got this big swelling in his face. He must be in a lot of pain and, you know, it's very badly infected. Whoa. So I'm not quite sure what you're going to find underneath yeah. that, but it's not going to be nice. So this lump is actually under the eye. Oh, that third eyelid is so inflamed from this abscess. So looking at how bad that infection is and the extent of it, that could seed into his blood. And once that happens, he's in really, really bad trouble. He could potentially die from that. Straight away, Alison checks the inside of the Joey's mouth. Oh, there's a cavity that goes all the way up in there. I can actually stick my finger in it. And there's so much food in it. Oh, hang on. And I open that mouth and I have a good look and I can actually see there's this huge cavity going up into that area where the pus is and my finger can actually go all the way up. So we definitely know it's coming from the mouth. It's got a loose tooth. Mm. Yeah, it's a tooth root abscess. So we're looking at two really wobbly infected premolars and because they're so wobbly and infected that pus is accumulated around the roots and into that area under his eye. So I think what's gonna happen when I pull this tooth out is all this pus is gonna run out. So we're just packing out the back of his throat so it doesn't go down his lungs. Got it. Hey. Whoa, man. That looks like part of his jawbone's just kind of fractured, fractured away. away with that tooth. Oh, the infection Sorry. must be in the jawbone. So it's pretty smelly and nasty in there. Just in that cavity behind the infected teeth, we can see grass, oats, decaying food there. Oh, no. oh, it comes in waves. And what we think may have happened is that the infection is also eating away at that jaw. Okay, there's still a bit of jaw bone up here, but I might have to get it out from here. Oh God, he's going blue. Is he not taking breaths? Suddenly, the little Joey has stopped breathing. Can you just give him some pure oxygen? All right, let's do 10 breaths. Close, one, two, and then open, three. His tongue is still a blue. Oh, man. That looks like part of his jawbone is just kind of fractured, fractured away. away. At the Possumwood Wildlife Sanctuary, Twins Alison and Audrey are in the middle of treating a joey 
with a shocking tooth abscess. Oh God, he's going blue. Is he not taking breaths? All of a sudden, the Joey has stopped breathing. Can you just give him some pure oxygen, please? All right, let's do 10 breaths. Oh yeah, he's going pink now. It's a huge relief as Joe the Joey starts breathing again. And now the twins can start cleaning out the massive infection in his jawbone. Oh, the pus is coming out the eye now. We're going to just try and lance the abscess from the outside. And I'm just putting my finger through the, the root area where we removed that tooth, and I can feel a piece of bone that we need to get out there. So if I sort of hold the eyeball away, and then you cut in a ventral motion downwards, mm -hmm. so that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Yep. Just move your finger. That's it. Get ready for the smell. Oh, it's strong. Oh. Oh. oh there's so much pus coming out there. Oh. That's a lot. I think possibly he fractured his, um, his jaw. upper jaw. With the abscess now completely drained, the girls want to x-ray Joe's jawbone to get a clearer picture of the damage that may have been caused by the shocking infection. X-ray! Be interesting to see exactly what part and how much he's lost. So that's the top jaw here, that's the soft tissue swelling where the abscess was. That's where we removed the two teeth. You can see there's some bone loss here. So that's where it's all started. So just having a look at that x-ray, we can see the area of the jaw that's actually come away with the tooth. And I think there's probably some sort of traumatic injury hit by a car where that's really fractured that bone and then caused all this secondary infection. So lucky little man to make it today. And I'm sure he's feeling a lot better with all that pus and yeah. discharge out of his face. It's been a massive surgery for little Joe and he'll now be left to sleep off the anaesthetic. Nice and warm. Hi Audrey Allison, here we go, here's Joe. 24 hours later, the twins are anxious to check on Joe and discover whether he'll be one of Possumwood's survivors. Oh, look at that. That third eyelid has retracted all the way back and it's no longer red and angry, so that's a huge improvement. You can see that pressure's really off the yeah. eyeball now that he yeah. can close that eye. There's no damage there, which is great. I'm just going to have a look in your mouth, babe. Let's have a look. Definitely smells a lot better. Yeah. So we're really happy with Joe's recovery. He's done really well overnight. Hey, can you see us a bit better now? Still a little bit groggy from the sedation, so we'll bring him to bed and once he's recovered, I'm pretty sure he's going to be bouncing around in no time. Doing very well. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.